today we're going to be continuing our series in the sanctity of life and we're going to be talking about the quest for perfection a history of eugenics and abortion and you know as i researched this topic i found myself delving into a very dark side of humanity um, that at times made me angry and at times made me cry but at the same time i realized that it's really important for us as christians to understand the history and the foundation of the abortion movement I want to start by defining the term eugenics because I realize not everyone um, may be familiar with that. So what is eugenics? It was a term that was coined in 1883 by Francis Galton and Galton is considered the father of eugenics. Now interestingly enough he is also the cousin of Charles Darwin. Now Charles Darwin is the father of evolution and we're going to discuss a little bit later the connections uh, between eugenics and evolution. Well, the term uh, you actually means good, and genics means in birth. So it literally means good in birth or well-born. It means being born with certain desirable characteristics as defined by a particular society or a group of people. Uh, most people would define it as being healthy or fit, having no defects or disease. Um, the Nazis defined it as light hair and blue eyes. So it would depend on the society to a certain extent. Now, the practice of eugenics was first brought to national attention in 1915 with the case of Baby Bollinger. And a newspaper reporter recorded these words upon seeing the baby. He said, a pink bit of humanity lay upon the white cloth. Its blue eyes were wide open. Its hair was brown and silky. It dug at its face with little fist. It cried lustily as it drew up chubby legs and kicked out. It seemed quite vigorously informed with life. However, he also noticed that the baby had deformities, and doctors' reports confirm that. Uh, the baby was missing an ear, had curvature of the spine, uh, paralysis, and several other deformities. But it was not questioned by the doctors involved that a simple surgery could save the child's life. However, um, this child was sentenced to death by the doctor in charge, Dr. Harry Hall Selden. Um, he did not want to perform the surgery and actually convinced the mother, Anna, to allow the child to die. Why? Hall Selden said this, There's no doubt the child would be defective mentally and morally if allowed to live. It might be criminal. Certainly it would be dependent. It would be a burden to itself and society. And many other doctors agreed with him. He was actually tried in court and found not guilty of murder. And when he was asked by a reporter if this was a common practice among doctors, he replied, not infrequently. So instead of doctors actively saving lives, they were actively destroying them. Now, it might be easy to think, well, this obvious disregard for human life is a thing of the past, and things like this just don't happen today. But they do. In 2005, um, several doctors published what they called the Groningen Protocol in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what they did was these doctors analyzed 22 cases of newborns with severe spina bifida and that had been euthanized, which is the fancy word for killed, to determine considerations that they believe doctors should use um, to, or take into account when discussing with patients whether or not a disabled child should be euthanized. So they said things like, well, extremely poor quality of life, you know, suffering, hopelessness, um, predicted lack of self-sufficiency, inability to communicate, hospital dependency, and long life expectancy, because in their view, the longer the life, the more suffering. Now, outside of the biblical basis that is wrong to murder, um, the March of Dimes webpage on spina bifida states, with treatment, all, children with spina bifida, meaning all forms, usually can become active individuals. So their considerations here are completely without merit. And yet, these are being used to determine whether children should be allowed to live or die. We need to realize that eugenic uh, ideals are alive and well in the present. So in this presentation, what I want to do is discuss the history of eugenics and understand how it provides a foundation or essentially the roots for the abortion movement and specifically Planned Parenthood. And this is necessary to understand the role of eugenics and abortion in the present and be prepared for what is to come in the future, which I'll discuss in the next presentation. So let's talk about the goal of eugenics. And that was to create a superior race of humans. 
Uh, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, the founder of the Race Betterment Foundation, said, We have wonderful new races of horses, cows, and pigs. Why should we not have a new and improved race of men? And yes, this is the same Kellogg's associated with breakfast cereal. Okay, so they were, they, he was very much involved in this. Um, and many eugenicists believed, in other words, that the principles used in breeding animals should be applied to man, because after all, man was just another animal. Eugenicists believed in evolution. Leading eugenicist Paul Popino stated, there are only two ways to improve the germinal character of the race, to better it in a fundamental and enduring manner. One is to kill off the weaklings born in each generation. That is nature's way, the old method of natural selection, which we all agreed must be supplanted. When we abandon that, we have but one conceivable alternative. So in other words, his idea is natural selection isn't working fast enough or well enough. So we need to do something else. And that is to adopt some means by which fewer weaklings will be born in each generation. The only hope for permanent race betterment under social control is to sub substitute a selective birth rate for nature's selective death rate. That means eugenics. And so they believe that things like charity, for example, in the form of taking care of the poor and the sick, were actually prohibiting natural selection from working properly, and so mankind needed to intervene. Uh, Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, said, Organized charity itself is a symptom of a malignant social disease. Our civilization has bred, is breeding, and is perpetuating constantly increasing numbers of defectives, delinquents, and dependents. My criticism, therefore, is not directed at the failure of philanthropy, but rather at its success. So they were upset that people were taking care of people. The eugenicists sought to intervene and use artificial selection to effectively counter what doctors, Christians, and others were doing to take care of the sick and poor, to bring man back to what nature intended, so to speak, so man could evolve and progress. Now, I mentioned earlier that Francis Galton um, coined the term eugenics in the late 1800s and that he was the father of eugenics, but eugenics was practiced long before our modern times. Um, it was part of Roman law and the law of the Twelve Tables that says an obviously deformed child must be put to death. And both Plato and, Plato and Aristotle supported this practice and it was not uncommon for infants to be exposed or left outside the home for a period of time to determine if they were actually fit enough to survive because the Romans only wanted the best for their future warriors. But we want to fast forward to Galton because he is the father of the eugenics and the beginning of that movement and explore further the foundation for the basis of eugenics. Listen to what Galton wrote to Darwin, remember uh, Charles Darwin is his cousin, after reading uh, Darwin's book, Origin of Species, which was um, Darwin's seminal book on evolution by natural selection. Galton said this, I have laid it down in the full enjoyment of a feeling that one rarely experiences after boyish days of having been initiated into an entirely new province of knowledge, which nevertheless connects itself with other things in a thousand ways. What he saw in that book was we need to apply the mechanisms of evolution, specifically selection, to mankind. Galton said the creed of eugenics is founded upon the idea of evolution, that we can evolve into better and better humans. He said eugenics must be introduced into the national conscience like a new religion. It has indeed strong claim to become an orthodox religious tenet for the future. For eugenics cooperates with the workings of nature by securing that humanity shall be represented by the fittest races. What nature does blindly, slowly, and ruthlessly, man must do providentially, quickly, and kindly. Again, the idea that nature isn't working fast enough or well enough, man must intervene. Galton said, could not the undesirables be got rid of and the desirables multiplied? And he promoted the ideas that things like human intelligence and other hard to measure traits, and such as behaviors, were greatly influenced by heredity, not the environment, which was the sort of the popular mindset of the day. His book, um, Hereditary Genius, which was written in 18, published in 1869, was really the first social scientific attempt to study genius and greatness, and Darwin really liked this book. So when Darwin read the book, he wrote to Galton and said, I have read only 50 pages of your book, but I must exhale myself, else something will go wrong with my inside. I do not think I ever in all my life read anything more interesting and original, and how well and clearly you put every point. And it had a great influence on Darwin and the ideas that he presented in his book, Descent of Man, which he published just a few years later in 1871. Darwin wrote in that book, 
Thus, the weak members of civilized societies propagate their kind. No one who has attended to the breeding of domestic animals will doubt that this must be highly injurious to the race of man. It is surprising how soon a want of care or care wrongly directed leads to the degeneration of a domestic race. But expecting but excepting in the case of man himself, hardly anyone is so ignorant as to allow his worst animals to breed. Okay, so again, man is an animal, and, and we must interfere and, and, and help mankind evolve in a certain way. So we see that the concepts of evolution are the foundation for eugenics, that mankind can evolve into something better and higher if we just get rid of the undesirables and increase the desirables.